Hi everyone, this is JJ from JDeviantJ. Thank you so much for joining me today. I know I have a lot of explaining to do. Um, I'm fully aware that I, I, I reappeared on my channel two months ago um, to, you know, to talk a little bit about the coronavirus pandemic and just basically to extend um, a massive hello from, uh, from London after basically being pretty much silent for, for two years with respect to this channel. And I think that a lot of you were expecting shortly after that video released that I would be resuming with my tower readings for every single sign. That's not to say that I didn't try, and here I'm being extremely candid, I did try. Um, as many of you or may or may not know, some of you do know this about me, I really like to approach my tarot work organically. I, I don't like to force it. And you may have heard that I used to have, I used to find it difficult um, to consistently produce 12 readings, one for each sign, every single month. Uh, the pressure to do so and to do so in a timely, ma in a timely ma manner, excuse me, um, wasn't always uh, very easy and sometimes I felt like I was forcing it a bit too much and when it comes to connecting to higher powers, when it comes to also connecting to yourself, being true to your soul and honoring people whom I'm reading for, I simply felt like that I couldn't sustain it and that it couldn't go on um, too much longer without me feeling like I was jeopardizing our relationship and our connection. There are some people that altogether feel doing this digitally is already um, inappropriate and that tower readings must only really be done in person. I prefer to do them in person, but it that doesn't mean that I that I cannot share what I have to say with everyone else. And it's taken me such a long time to get to this point where I've I've received so much encouragement, so much encouragement from from you, uh, from my own partner, from my friends and family, to basically resume this. Um, of course, I've been very happy to give private readings behind the scenes and have continued to do so, um, but felt that it was really time to come back. I don't want to make any false promises now and say that, hey, you guys are going to be getting, you know, 12 readings every single month. Again, I will emphasize this. I must be candid with you and say, I want to take this one step at a time. Let's take it um, at e each day as it comes, basically. So I think really what brought me here today as well was an overwhelming sensation that I needed to break the silence. And I've been saying that a lot, actually. I have been saying that I need to break my silence. And it just it just felt appropriate. It felt right. So let's let's go let's talk a bit about the astrology. I don't want to focus too much on it, but let's touch on a few points. Mercury is now retrograde. Pluto has been retrograde. Um We've just seen a lunar eclipse in Sagittarius as well, and as you may well be aware, the south and north node, um, in terms of eclipses, are shifting into Gemini and Sagittarius. So um, large changes are basically um, among us, and all it takes is for you to switch on the television, watch the news, and basically witness um, what every single country right now is facing, um, to know, well, I mean, you, you don't even need that really, just uh, for, for, for many of us, it's simply looking out of the window, uh, and, and it's enough to, to tell that, you know, our times have drastically changed right now. And with the Black Lives Matter movement, which I heavily support at the moment, it's, it's hitting a lot of people very, very hard that the way in which they live their life can no longer go on. And 
whether or not we are ready to face a change, you know, that is, that's the question I think that you need to all be asking yourselves right now. It's a question that I've been asking myself, well, for a very long time now. I never really stop asking myself um, if I'm ready for change, uh, to embrace change, and to have a look at, you know, some of the more complicated, darker themes in one's life. And here I'm alluding to Pluto. So I do highly recommend that we all do some soul searching, especially the shadow work that is required to understand, you know, where our anxieties and insecurities come from, to also understand how we are dealing with the frustration and the anger that we've basically harbored for generations, uh, centuries even, because just because you've lived only in this lifetime now and that you are here in this lifetime now does not mean that you are not affected by previous incarnations, that you are not influenced by generational values and belief systems. So what I want to do today is give a general reading which will apply for everyone. And uh, before I go into that, I just want to also say that one of the more fundamental reasons why I wasn't able to launch um, any readings since the last two months was because I was having such great difficulty connecting with each sign individually. Every time I came to my meditational practice, I was overwhelmed by just 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 the amount of different different signs and themes that I was connecting to all in parallel all at the same time that it was very difficult for me to discern exactly if I was connecting with air fire earth you get the, you get the drift that didn't stop me though from progressing forward with my meditation and so I, I took notes. I took notes of what was coming to me with respect to each zodiac sign and I wanted to elaborate more on those notes in one-to-one -one consultations, separate videos. I, I've got, I will be going over these with you all today in this video. And it's when we start going over these cards that um, please feel free then to, to timestamp. I would really appreciate it actually to timestamp for each sign. So here's what we're going to do today. I'm going to be giving uh, a general reading using the uh, Smith Weight deck that I have. And after that, when we briefly touch upon each of the you know key words that came to me a couple of months ago already for each sign I'm going to draw one card from the tiny universal weight tarot deck I'm going to show you the cover the reason being is that if I even attempt to grab this tiny deck now um, rest assured it will collapse in my hands. It is that difficult to shuffle you guys and so I, I have shuffled them. It took me a while. I'm just going to raise it to the screen so that oh and that was exactly what I was I was worried was going to happen. It has come undone um, and now there are cards everywhere including on the floor excuse me while I retrieve the fallen cards. My goodness. And guys, you know, I just want to say thank you so much for all your continued support. Um, even though I've not been very consistent, have I? And I do apologize for that. Okay, so I think there's just two more here. I'm not looking at the cards that have fallen. I'm simply putting them back in the deck. My mistake for attempting to show you 
<laughs> this deck. This deck was gifted to me actually from a, a dear friend of mine, another fellow tower reader whom I met in Dublin a few years ago. And uh, I haven't actually used this deck for any readings until now. And that's because it's, it's really an impractical one to shuffle. It was very, very difficult to handle. I mean, y you think it's hard to handle larger decks? Try handling the super tiny deck. <laughs> anyway, let's get into it, shall we? Okay, so you know my process. I like to shuffle, and I like, these, I like the cards to come out on their own. I have my own process with every single deck. Um, every deck teaches me a new way of drawing the cards and here I am asking that higher powers to be grace me with the direction that we need to head in today and for the next couple of months in our lives. What is it that we really need to learn about ourselves and the current situation and basically, you know, the climate that we're living in now? It hasn't been easy for us all to be in isolation. It hasn't been easy for, for all the thousands of people who have lost their jobs. And it certainly hasn't been easy for the hundreds of thousands of families that have been affected by this coronavirus pandemic who have lost loved ones to COVID-19. My condolences to any of you if you have been impacted by this pandemic. The first card has already come out and it's reversed. It is the Page of Swords reversed. I'll, I'll drop the screen soon when enough cards come out so that I can show you the cards. But for now, bear with me. The energy is stagnant, but this needed to happen. This needed to happen. I needed to give this reading today. And I will not stop until we have something that we can work with. So what are the messages that we need to bring today? What do we need to hear for air, fire, earth, and water? The Five of Swords. So it looks like air is quite prominent already in this reading. And it's not very surprising given you know, the mental anxiety surrounding our situations. Temperance in reverse has come out now as well. There is really a need for us to restore the imbalance that we've had to endure over the last few months, and for some of you even over the last year. Oh, yes. The Knight of Swords, again, overwhelming swords energy here. So we're talking Aquarius, Libra, Gemini, and of course, happy birthday to all my beautiful Gemini folk. What can I say? This is, this is not easy energy to deal with guys okay the cards are really coming out now all right okay and i think i can i can drop the screen now um to show you the cards i'll also pull each card up closer so far we have the Page of Swords, we have it in the reverse though, followed by the Five of Swords 
upright, temperance, reversed, the knight of swords, upright, six of pentacles, the tower, two of wands. Okay. I'm not quite, you know, whether we should continue to draw cards or stop with the two of wands is my biggest question right now. This is already turning into a very heavy reading and I haven't even shared any insights with you. I will feel it when the time is right to stop shuffling. So let's touch on this Page of Swords in the reverse. The Page of Swords upright is already a card that doesn't always make me feel very comfortable. And here's why. Because with the Page of Swords, we're prone to accident. We're prone to accident because we might be overthinking things and we simply might not eat, we might not be working through our thoughts. One more card. Two more cards. Two more cards. Okay, but I will treat them together. We have the Ten of Pentacles and the Seven of Cups. Okay, and I am actually going to stop there because 10, as you know, is the end of a cycle and I really feel as though, well, we've barely even begun this very tumultuous cycle right now. So there's already a lot to cover here. So with the Page of Swords, you know, talking about mental anxiety and, and and our tendency now to overthink about our current state of affairs and what we need to do in order to head in a more positive direction. So a lot of us have had to drastically change this, our, our strategy in life right now. Some of us are furloughed, others have lost work, others have lost loved ones. And simply where do we go from here and how do we deal with this anguish? It's certainly not um, in our best interest to follow suit with this Five of Swords. And the Five of Swords is looking back at the Page of Swords in the reverse here. With a smirk on his face, almost as though he wants to blame this page for being so reckless. All the while, he himself is being conniving and uh, potentially also not just hiding things from his peers or co-workers but failing to accept truly what is going on with his own internal state and the temperance in reverse which comes right next to the five of swords preaches truly our need to re-establish balance in our life. It is really not easy to do that, especially when we talk about emotional balance. And we may feel very defensive at the minute. We might feel argumentative. We might feel aggression. And do you know what? This full moon in Sagittarius as well is not a calming full moon at all. So if you have been feeling riled up, a lot, a lot of it can be pointed back to the full moon, but if we were to completely scrap the full moon, right, and just look at how we're living our lives right now, how can we be so calm? If we look at the Black Lives Matter movement right now, there is so much pent up anger and aggression that has been within us for hundreds of years and it's all coming to the surface now and it all needs to be addressed. 
it is so powerful. These shifts right now that are happening on a global scale are so powerful that they simply cannot be ignored. We can't even stop to think for a second that there is a wild virus roaming, roaming about, which has lethal effects on us. And we're deciding to put that aside because tackling these societal issues at hand now for thousands of people is so much more important and is worth the risk. I don't want to receive backlash. I know a lot of you might come, come up to me and say you're being irresponsible by saying it's okay to go out and protest uh, amid this pandemic. Uh, people aren't being socially responsible, uh, transmission rates are, are, are going to skyrocket, people are going to fall ill, the death toll is going to go up again. I know, I know, and I'm not saying that um, we should be less attentive. And I'm not saying that it's a good idea to breach any, any of these rules. By all means, please stay safe and please try to keep your distance please wear masks where possible and be mindful of those around you particularly your elderly folk and remember just because someone's not exhibiting symptoms does not mean that they haven't been uh, you know that they haven't contracted covid-19 this doesn't mean that they can't transfer it over to you so yes, please be vigilant. But back to the reading. All of these swords um, happen to be pointing towards the same thing. But unfortunately, they are looking backwards and they're not even looking forward. They, the energy is so, it, it, it's so static and erratic actually is the right word. It's so erratic right now that it's become increasingly difficult to think straight, even for me to right now put, put this in words that I myself can make sense of is not very, very easy. So with the Knight of Swords being extremely defensive right now, the Knight of Swords is putting off our need to work on this temperance card. We need to flip the temperance card so that it comes upright so that we can make the most of this beautiful major arcana card. The temperance card is one of my favorite cards in tarot and that's because we have a lot to learn from this intermingling between our emotion, our thought and what we do with it basically. And this night, I'm, I'm going to just bring down the screen again so that some of you can see the relationship between the cards when this knight of swords is looking back it's almost like he's ignoring the advice of the temperance card and there's almost this 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 mentality of you know we have to keep fighting we can't stop fighting there is no time for us to to focus on ourselves there's no time for us to do the inner work it's time for us to get together and to fight towards a common cause, but where is the... And while there is... While there is decency in fighting towards a common cause, doing this in a reckless manner is not going to give us the results that we are looking for. And so we're seeing a lot of violent clashes happening now between protesters and the police. We're seeing people get injured. We're seeing people also, unfortunately, get so hurt that they are, you know, being hospitalized and, and worse yet, encountering death. And so, while a lot of people have told me that they feel now than ever, it is not a time to be selfish. And we, we must be selfless. We must be selfless and come together and establish what our common causes are and how to best fight towards a common goal of achieving peace and harmony. Unfortunately though, not everyone is interested in peace and harmony. Some people very much so that embody this five sword energy are of the idea that 
you uh, and you know what I'm sorry this just came to me this just came to me now very very strongly this we are here we are talking about looting we're talking about people that are taking advantage of what's happening right now and looting and Others embodying this energy, this very, very fast-paced energy of the Knight of Swords, are getting hurt, are hurting others that they come across, much like this Page of Swords ends up hurting herself because she's unable to control necessarily the direction that she's going and she's not looking in front of her as she's, um, you know, tra traversing the terrain, which happens to, to be quite a hilly terrain here. And you're carrying a sword you're on the hills and you're not looking forward. What do you expect is going to happen to you here? Right. Moving on to the second row. With the six of pentacles is the other side of the picture. A lot of powerful, wealthy, and not some, some not even wealthy people doing a lot of good and, you know, donating what they can proceeds to charities and people and this doesn't even have to just talk about money this is talking about sharing this is about you know this is about sharing your food sharing your time sharing your thoughts but most importantly as well it is sharing your wealth in the form of love and care this person comes from humble backgrounds. This person may have built themselves up from absolutely nothing at all. This person may have only ten dollars, ten pounds, ten euros in their pocket and yet they, they decide to give away 50% of what they have to be left with half of that. Because if they can help someone then they will. And it is this kind of energy that we need more of. It is that kind of energy that will bring about this tower, which I know, you know, a lot of people look at the tower and they get, they get afraid. Uh, they think to themselves, what, what does this mean? Am I going to be, you know, am I going to be driven out of my business? Am I going to be driven out of my home? Um, is something in my life going to, going to drastically change and, you know, and, barely within any notice and what am I going to do? Am, am I expected to just pack up and leave? Am I, am I even, am I going to be able to handle any of it? I mean, I'm so sorry, but the world around us is going to, you know what I want to say, but I will not say it because I, I, I want to maintain a level of decorum with you and, um, and respect everyone who may be coming to this video um, expecting a polite reader. I am polite, I, pr I promise you. I'll, I'll try to remain polite, but much like a lot of people are angry and frustrated at what's happening around them, as am I. I have had to tackle my own, my own wounds and um, I've had to really reflect and I've had to be so sh I, I've had to be responsible enough to come to this reading level-headed enough le with with a clear mind I've put my anger and frustration aside and and I, I want to speak with you honestly and objectively this tower is not a bad omen we need this tower, this tower, in fact, is it's unraveling itself right in front of our our eyes. It's leading, it's causing many of us to look at what we've achieved so far and wonder, okay, well, where to next? Or for for those of you who have worked so hard and have had to lose a lot of what you've worked on right now, I, I just cannot even imagine what, how you may feel and what the consequences have been in your own personal lives. Um, what do you see? when you look at this two of wands, I want you to, to tell me which, which of these cards that are popping out now resonate with you.
because this two of wands, he's also looking backwards. He's not looking to the future. And this is what I'm finding quite disturbing about this reading, is that many of the characters that appear are looking backwards. This could be interpreted as us looking at our history and looking how we've and looking at how we've manifested everything basically that's going on around us now. I'm not you know obviously no one person is responsible for the tragedy that has occurred um, you know in the last 400 years well, when it comes to talking about race, when it comes to talking about equality. It is not one person who is responsible for this. It collectively, collectively, as, as a nation, as multiple nations and cultures coming together, we suffer from, we, we, we do, we suffer from inherent racism. And enough is enough. It, it might take several movements and revolutions to come before we're able to really address the topic at hand and reform the world that we live in today. Another beautiful way I would look at this card is that he's looking at the world. He's actually, he's got the globe in the palm of his hands. Typically speaking, you know, questioning, well, where do I go to next? I've built my empire. I've done well. And I've had to sacrifice a lot of, you know, my personal relationships to get this far. This is a typical entrepreneur who's, you know, plotting his, his next move. But in this case, we're not talking about the businessmen of this world. We're talking about the humanitarians of this world that need to come together and truly address how we got here. How did we accumulate so much pain and inequality? This Ten of Pentacles usually talks about a great family life, but also great wealth and material gains that can come from beautiful collaboration between loved ones and family members. It is true that we all, we, we, are, we are all born into a family, but it, it is even truer that as we mature, we also pick and choose our family members. Our nearest and dearest are not always our first-hand family members. Our nearest and dear dearest are those that we've gotten to know um, as we've evolved, as we've evolved in our personal lives, in our careers, in school, in academia, whatever it is that you do, whatever your venture is, some may or may not get to this state of wealth, this beautiful ten of pentacles where you've got it all. You've got it all. But a lot of people have also lost what they've gained over the last few months. I don't, I have, I haven't, you know, have, we haven't witnessed such an economical depression really since Correct me if I'm wrong. Here in the UK, it would be since 2006, 2008. I'm not an expert. But in our lifetimes, it, 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 for us to expect that we would have to endure another recession, another global depression, it, 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 it was unheard of. And, you know, while we can argue no one really saw this pandemic coming, yeah, yeah, you know, there are all kinds of rumors about 
actually we, we did we did know that this was a possibility we we knew it back when there was SARS and MERS and and even the Ebola pandemic we've had ample time actually to gather our resources our knowledge and our expertise in science basically to rally together and come up with solutions that could have easily prevented this pandemic from getting out of hand but you know what this is I, I don't want to veer too off topic the fact of the matter is that a lot of you are hurt because you've spent the most of your life the majority of your life having to sacrifice your own personal happiness at times so that your children can grow up in a way that you would have wanted for yourselves so that you could give them the life that they best deserve so that you can also give the life that you, to yourself that you deserve we work hard to get here this is not handed to us this is not handed to us this is years and years of dedication this is years of not taking a day off so that you can build a family home your forever home if you will so that you can build your business from the ground up so that you can build your career from the ground up this will mean various things for different people all to have it crumble and have you regress into the state of the seven of cups where you are so completely disillusioned and some of you may not even know right from wrong some of you don't know should you be you know should you be feeling angry or should you be trying to calm yourself down basically should you embrace the anger that you feel right now and charge forward like this knight of swords without thinking twice about it or do you stop and do you reflect now one card that has been on my mind for a very very long time is the four of swords the Four of Swords is not in this reading. In fact, we missed it barely by a card with this Five of Swords. But the Four of Swords talks about, you know, laying to rest some of this mental anguish and mental anxiety so that you can regain and reclaim your power in a healthier way. Without stopping to reflect, we are unable to really decipher what it is that truly troubles us and again I will say this again with Pluto ever in its slowest of motions right now being retrograde it is wreaking all sorts of havoc and that's not a bad thing just because Pluto has been you know seen to be the planet of destruction it works and it moves in our favor it seeks to you know, destabilize systems and structures that no longer benefit us. And in turn, this tower makes so much sense, and I'm pretty sure a lot of you will agree with me on that one. So do you choose to charge forward like this Knight of Swords, which he's not even charging forward, he's charging backwards, because we need to learn. We need to learn from the accumulated hate and anger and frustration and use it, use the anger and frustration that we all may be experiencing right now to learn, to learn from how we, to learn from our, the events of our times right now. Not to use that anger to create more destruction. I need to clarify myself because I realize that I have just, I've been a little bit contradictory in this reading. The destabilization and uh, re, you know the destabilization that comes from the tower card can be seen as destruction. It can be the destruction of a foundation or several belief systems and values that no longer serve us at all. Having said that, it is a very good thing. However, to charge forward with anger and frustration in the way that this Knight of Swords does, or to take advantage of the crippling system right now and loot, or to be so disoriented, disoriented that we don't see the best way forward, and yet we want to act nonetheless, 
is to see us fall further into our own demise and inevitably this seven of cups will be overwhelming for so many people i i this is a piscean card especially if you've been here and especially if this has been taken away from you right so that's your general reading and before this video gets too long I would like to go over the channel the messages and keywords that came to me a little less than two months ago now for each of the signs um, will you let me know please how you feel about this does this resonate with you did it resonate with you potentially in the past and is this energy that you are still harboring so I'm not going to be doing this in any specific order but we will be starting with Scorpio because it is the first to come up here and now with Scorpio the message was this is what we feared it is here If any Scorpios, including myself, hear me say this, as I hear myself say this, um, I wouldn't be surprised if a lot of you then say, you know, but Scorpios, what are they ever afraid of? They're not afraid of anything. If anything, we're afraid of Scorpios. Scorpios are so intense, right? Pluto, ruler of Scorpio ancient ruler of Scorpio. Mars also is a ruler of Scorpio, right? So again, there is a lot of significance and I do urge you to please dig into your charts. If you need any help with that, you can also reach out to me and we will see where exactly Pluto and its transits and, and, and other transits may be playing out if you want in your own life. But with, with this, what, what do I mean by this is what we feared and it is here? We do not fear change. In fact, we also don't fear destabilization. We've been doing it for such a long time now. Different countries all around the world have been revolting for one reason or another before this pandemic and will continue to do so even after this pandemic. If this Black Lives Matter movement also didn't happen, that's not that, that that wasn't to say that it wasn't going to happen in the future well it's not to say that we weren't going to be challenging the system in, in in other various ways right so what is it that we fear is this behavior this behavior this behavior that's what we fear what do we need more of this caring nurturing behavior this to happen oh so responsibly and the more you embrace this the easier it will play out in your life if you've done the shadow work this will play out in your favor you will recover like this again it is not the end of your forward thinking right it is here and it is time so scorpio right scorpio What's your card? Oh, it's reversed. And lo and behold, it is this time, it is the five of wands in reverse. So what could this mean? And what could this mean, you know, in relation to the phrase, this is what we feared, it is here. More more insight into this more of a, you know kind of I, I i wrote a bit of a summary as well um when i was meditating on each sign and in this case had written a time contemplated so many times in one's mind the horror of it i hope the world never gets to see unfortunately though it is what it is we are witnessing it we are experiencing it and there's really not much left for us to do but to embrace it. So please do embrace your dark, your dark side and
this 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 five of of this five of ones in reverse. Now five of ones usually in the upright format, you know, it talks about silly banter potentially, silly fights, petty fights if anything, happening between groups of friends, family members, uh, the kind of uh, fighting that you know can't really be taken all that seriously. In the reverse, though, Scorpio, you are drained of energy right now. In fact, there, you you can't you don't want to contemplate what it might mean for you to pick to even pick and choose fights with your friends and family right now. There is not enough energy for that. You need to, we we all need to reclaim our power right now. But it could very well be that. And, and and this is, you know, this is just more my intuition telling me that water signs now have to ground themselves a bit more potentially than any other signs. We need to ground ourselves in meditation. We need to work through the emotional turmoil because... Because, Scorpio, right, because you are so greatly knowledgeable of all that takes place, not just here on Earth, but all that takes place in multiple other dimensions, I like to see it. This comes with a heavy burden, and it's how do you, how do you effectively teach others about what this could mean for them, right? How do you help others work through their own emotional turmoil or, or own mental anguish when you yourselves are going through it? And I'm a Scorpio rising, so believe me when I tell you, oh, I feel it and I feel it more than ever, which has made coming to this reading so very difficult. Um, Scorpio, it may not be in your place right now to educate people. It, it may not be in anyone's place, for that matter, to educate other people. We must, we must respect, you know, the experience that we've all gained. Um, but we also need to know when, when to back off. And we need to appreciate that this might not be our fight to fight. Um, it is a battle which we may be doing better off by simply observing, potentially even guiding those who we feel are lost, but to guide them with the least amount of words and most and foremost, to guide with empathy. Because if you are enduring this right now, you're handling it a lot better than so many other people. Because if you are a Scorpio, you've already done the work, my friends. You have already done the work. You've gone to hell and back. Not now, many years ago, you've gone to hell and back and you think you've traversed hell and you think you're done with it, but you never truly are. It is a part of you and it's, you know, it's a part that I, I embrace. It's a part that I embrace and the more you embrace this, the more you become accepting of your shadow side, but it is not in our place to force this sort of enlightenment onto others, especially if they are not ready. So Scorpio, that's you. Aries, you're next. Aries, what I got for you is numb. This was a little less than two months ago, right? Numb. I feel that the energies now have tilted slightly. You are no longer numb. You've come out of that shell, and in fact, you are ready to charge into war. Responsibly, though. Aries, numb, riding solo, getting what you asked for, and then realizing it wasn't really what you wanted. Tell me if you resonate with that, guys. Um, another way this came to me was... <laughs> Now you've got your cake, and you have, and uh, you know how they say, you can't have your cake and eat it. In your case, it's oh, I, I I've got my cake now, 
and um, I can't eat it because I don't have an appetite, but I can't give it to anyone else because it's not theirs for me to give. Um, and, and, and so as a result of that, I'm, I'm really, I don't even know what to do with myself because when, an, when Aries has excessive energy, basically, they need to put this energy to good use. And Aries, you're extremely brilliant at delegating things, right? But in, in time like this where you may not even have your support group around you, you may not even be able to work the way that you usually do. You usually do. A lot of people are uh, working from home at the moment, remote working, so there's less efficient collaboration happening. Well, you know, some would argue that working from home makes them a lot more productive and, you know, in, in this day and age, we've got a wealth of tools to choose from to make working a bit more um, collaborative, fun, and definitely very effective, right? But yet you still crave this human touch. You you want to you want to see your delegation actually happen in front of your eyes, rather than trust that it's trust that people are picking it up and um, doing it the way that you would. Because Aries, you're a natural born leader, right? And although you don't. You don't have to be on top of your team team members. You usually pick your team members well, and you usually trust them with uh, what what they've been assigned. Um, it, it's not always very, you know. It, it's not it's not as mm, intuitive now to do that when all we have to work with is a screen essentially. So, what's the card that I'll be pulling for you, Aries? And it's reversed, and now I'm wondering how many of these cards are reversed. It is, ooh, I need my glasses. Seven of Pentacles, Seven of Pentacles reversed. Actually, um, that makes sense. Well, at least it makes sense to me. Tell me if it makes sense to you. But basically, if you're getting what you asked for, so you wanted a bit more independence potentially, you wanted to be that leader, you want to have control over your own situation. Um, so basically, you get to enjoy the fruits of your labor, which is what the Seven of Pentacles talks about. In the reversed format, this becomes ever, ever so increased, you know, it's increasingly difficult to do that now. And in fact, you can't really boast about this either. You can't. It is a very sensitive topic right now to broach. A lot of Aries, you know, they may still be at work. So in, in, in certain companies, um, companies have had to take very difficult decisions as to who stays and who goes and who's on furlough. And it's all really up in the air, right? A lot of Aries, because you are in leadership roles or roles uh, like, you know, that where, where, where you have the luxury to, you know, uh, bring, bring a team together and to manage a team, your teams may have been asked to leave. You may have had to make call such difficult decisions, basically, to let people go or to put them on furlough. And if you if you're not familiar with the word furlough, it's basically being asked to leave, um, to leave and not to work. You you receive a certain amount of your of your salary, but you are not allowed to work for your employer. As much as you love your job, as much as you're going to have time on your hands, you cannot contribute. And unfortunately for Aries, you know that that puts you in a compromising situation because you don't have the support that you usually had and you're so you usually delegate you're brilliant delegators and now you have to take on the responsibility yourself and that can be quite overwhelming at one point though you may have asked for this but now you've gotten it and how exactly are you going to make the most of it Aries you tell me Libra let's move on to you Libra, you're preparing us for all of this. So now, if Scorpio was afraid that this is what was going to happen, you know, it was something that Scorpios had been dreading for a while, potentially because they're like, well, I can handle it, but I'm not quite sure if others can handle it because, you know, we've, we've gone to hell. We've traversed that. Um, others, you know, it's not very easy for others to, to basically take a plummet into the depths of their soul that way. Libra, 
what you're doing is you're helping us actually remain balanced right now or this is what is coming to me you are helping us become a bit more ba Libra in fact you know you'd be the best person right now to preach this temperance card so Librans you know you're taking time out to work on yourselves but you're not just working on yourself to you know and on your own path of self-discovery you want to work on yourself so that you can actually help others also realize what their path to self-discovery could potentially look like. So I've got a very, very wonderful uh, Libran friend myself who's recently been awarded or given the chance to um, start learning and uh, w what it would be like to, you know, have a, wom a woman's circle. So uh, she's working towards becoming a facilitator, a facilitator of the knowledge that she's embracing right now. And um, you know, while she's only one person, Libra, you've always, you are justice. That is what you bring to the plate. You bring to the plate justice. And by taking the time to learn uh, methods and skills that help you portray, um, portray justice for others, um, you don't, you're not just doing yourself a favor, you're doing everyone else a favor. Um, okay, Libra, that is what you do best, though, to be honest. You're always looking out for others. You put others first. Um, and, and even if it means that you end up sacrificing your happiness too, right? Rather than sacrificing your happiness right now, you reclaim your power. You're using it, though, to help others understand how they can do the same. And that's extremely fulfilling. What's your card, Libra? Let's see. The two of wands, and it appears again, and it also appears upright. It was upright in the original reading, and it is upright here, Libra. And yeah, very much so. So, I mean, let me remind you of how we were interpreting this two of wands here. I was interpreting this two of wands as someone basically embodying the globe the world in the palm of their hands, but not necessarily looking forward, looking to our history and where is it that, you know, we went wrong? How did we get where we got? And basically dissecting everything so that we can make sense of it, so that we can um, upcycle our knowledge and start turning some of these characters around for goodness sake everyone's looking backwards and in this reading hardly many hardly anyone is really looking forward if whether that's because people have been asked to pause their lives right now i'm not sure that's that's really that that could be why we're seeing a lot of these inversions and we're seeing a lot of people and characters in the cards that are appearing today look backwards and look towards the past because we have so much to learn from our past so libra please keep doing what you're doing because we really need it so thank you for that right <laughs> sagittarius you're next sagittarius you never miss a target you are the archer when you've got a goal in mind you pick up your bow and arrow and you shoot and you nail it but sometimes that can be quite lonely. And so what came to me was, you're never this alone, usually. Sagittarius, you like to, you know, you like to have people around you. You are the party animal. You walk into a room and you brighten that room instantly. And even though you may not be looking for the attention, it's all eyes on you, Sagittarius, when you walk into that room. Now, how have you been dealing with this pandemic and needing to stay away from your friends and family it can't have been easy for you i know that lockdown's been you know restrictions have been easing up recently but we still have to be careful we still have to minimize the number of trips that we make 
For you, it's judgment in the reverse. I'd really love to hear what you think this means. I think judgment is an extremely powerful card that all of us can learn, for, learn from right now, regardless of the times. Judgment is also a card that we look at uh, when we're studying Pluto more deeply too, because when, so as I said, Pluto, you know, is kind of wreaking havoc at the minute. And it, it's calling us up on all of the wrongdoings we've had. It's been silent for such a long time. It's like that silent teacher that suddenly comes and flips everything on its head and says, you know what, you've been doing this wrong for such a long time and I've been extremely patient with you and I've been hoping that you could recover on your own by realizing what you've been doing all by yourself. But it looks like I can't rely on you to do that. It looks like a lot of us are not mature enough to do that. And so I'm going to do it for you. But judgment reversed means that, you know, for those of us who usually, we, we, we feed off of the energy of those around us, you know, we look for the positives that we can gain and we, we usually try to avoid the negatives but Sagittarius you know because you're, you're so involved with so many people different types of people everyone loves you um, and you can't do that now it, it's quite difficult so you're having to face this this time right now this time of, of deep self-reflection and your own judgment right now to figure it out on your own and that's not an easy task but you know, since everyone's being forced to change the way that they live their lives right now, this is an opportunity for you to learn more from yourself for once than to learn from those around you, right? Now, next, we've got Gemini. Gemini, happy birthday, first of all. Um, Gemini, what I got for you is, you're on it. I'm on it. I'm on it all the way. I'm not going to let this stop me. You're usually, you know, you, you like to keep yourself busy. You like to keep yourself going. And um, retreating into, shall we say, a more hermetic, um, hermetic nature. So, uh, what Virgo is so very used to doing all the time, actually, Gemini, you may be embracing this more. So I know a lot of Geminis like to take some time out um, to, to be creative and to work on their own projects, right? Um, now, is, now has been really the best time to do that. But if, again, you are not usually very grounded on this, and um, if you don't have control of your schedule these days and it's all up in the air, then it's difficult to remain focused and it's also it could also be difficult to become inspired especially if you like to gain this inspiration from the world around you from nature from art uh, um, a lot of um, my gemini friends you know they love they love the arts they love theater and uh, they themselves can be extremely um, creative. Gemini, you're also extremely intelligent, and you're like a sponge. You just like you love you love to absorb things. Now, what I find interesting is that not all of my Gemini friends uh, like to read, um, but you may also you may be finding yourself turning to some sort of education now. Um, because you're craving it, because you're craving, um, you know, you need to fill your time with something useful. And so if you've been taken away from your work at the moment, then you're finding a, a lot of other ways to reconnect, you know, with what, what, with what makes you happy and, and perhaps using this time to further your education and your knowledge. Um, so Gemini, you're on it. And you may not be as phased by all of this as everyone else is because you see the bigger picture. You may not be able to necessarily put this into words um, very easily, but you do see the bigger picture. Um, Gemini, you can be a wonderful teacher if you want to be. You just have to be a bit more patient with others. So Gemini, the card for you that comes up is this Six of Cups. And so the Six of Cups looks into the past, right? And usually recalls really wonderful uh, 
emotional memories in this case because we're dealing with the cups here. Um, but, you know, seeing as it's also a retrograde period, oh my goodness, how could I even forget about Venus retrograde, you guys? I mean, seriously, please also reach out and tell me how you feel that Venus retrograde has had an impact or influence on your relationships right now. It's not always a bad thing, you guys. It's not all doom and gloom. Venus retrograde teaches us a lot about the relationships that we have, and, um, it challenges, um, it challenges the principles that we hold in those relationships. A lot of people go into relationships blind because they're so blinded by love or lust and you know several weeks or months into the relationship when the honeymoon period starts to wane a little bit um, then they start to realize things about their partners that you know throw them off guard and they're like well actually I'm not I'm not so sure if, if, if this is quite right at the minute and you start reevaluating things and that is what Venus retrograde is all about it's about reevaluating your stance in a relationship and if you have a very strong relationship if you've got a very good working relationship with your partner your husband your wife whoever it may be um, this can also extend, you know, to platonic relationships too, but, you know, I'm touching a little bit more on the romantic side of things because um, a lot of people, when they, when they look at Venus retrograde, they're instantly usually concerned for their romantic relationships and stabilities in those relationships. Well, you could be, you could be visiting such concerns right now uh, and you could be addressing these concerns. Um, Actually, something I want to say is that Venus has what of, again, you know, please correct me if I'm wrong, but Venus was in the sign of Gemini for around four months and still is in the sign of Gemini, if I am not mistaken, meaning that the attraction that many people will feel towards Gemini is extremely heightened now, especially because it's your birthday, right? So uh, a lot of attention coming your way, not as much attention as you would usually get because, you know, you're not allowed to go out to the pub and enjoy um, some drinks with your friends and family soon, though. Uh, but nonetheless, it's you're irresistible right now. Gemini, you are really irresistible. So uh, back to Venus retrograde, you could be having um, exes come back to you. Just like, you know, dipping, dipping their hand in, in, into that past that, that you have, that wondering if there's a spark that's still there. And for some of you, um, sparks may be reignited. And, and please don't, you know, don't look at that as though it could be a detrimental thing because it's, oh no, and Venus is retrograde. A cautionary um, word of warning is that, um, you know, Venus retrograde, it is notorious when you decide to get together and hook up with someone completely brand new now because they may not, like I said, the impression that you have of them um, when you first meet them may start to become challenged a bit later down the line, a few weeks, a couple of months into you meeting them, especially after the retrograde period passes. Um, and then you, you, Venus enters a shadow period before it goes direct again. You know, there are heightened uh, times where, where this will happen. It ha has happened before, like in the shadow period before the retrograde. We're now in the retrograde. And as we leave that retrograde period and re-enter the shadow period before it goes direct is also when things get heated up again. So things come to the surface. But if you have a returning lover from the past because you've already got that karmic relationship from the past and um, had you split up then one would assume that you've worked on yourselves right then you can come together and you can come together in a in a healthier mat in a healthier manner because you would have addressed these issues and if you hadn't addressed these issues this is the time to address those issues, right? And then you may have a second shot at uh, your relationship, if that is what you both want. So that's what I have for you, Gemini. Next, we've got Leo. Now, Leo, this was a bit, you were a bit of a difficult one, actually, when I was um, 
you know, coming to meditate on your sign. But what I did get was hiatus. And then when I got hiatus, I thought, well, hey, actually, that's appropriate. You know, you're taking some time out. And that's all right. And let's see what I've written here on the back is, away from the pursuits of the physical, in pursuit of the soul's matters. And, and what a wonderful time to do that in any way, actually. Well, wonderful time. It's not really a wonderful time. But you know what I'm trying to say here is that we are privileged, actually, to have this time to reflect and to like work on ourselves and listen to our desires when... It, for once, you know, we we don't have to be bombarded by a nine-to-five routine. Um, although this is going to be difficult for a lot of you because some of you have children and children running around and they need to be um, uh, focused for you. And, you know, like if you used to have free time before, you certainly don't have free time now. A lot of um, attention goes towards maintaining your children. But having a hiatus, what does that mean? It means that you're having to do, you're taking time off from what it is that you're usually consumed with, be it work, be it other activities. And Leo, you are this, you are the sun, you are the sun. And, and I think it's a little bit tragic that we're having to face all the issues that we are now with, with beautiful weather, actually. And a lot of us uh, have been trapped at home when the sun's been out and, and we've wanted nothing more than to go out and to enjoy the sun and, and that's usually when you shine the most, right? Um, but, you know, there are other ways that you can fuel your creativity in this time and you've decided to turn inwards, which is um, not, it's not something that you do very often, Leo, so I'm very happy if you are actually embracing this and I really do choose, I really, sorry, I really do hope that you do embrace it and Leo, it's absolutely appropriate because this is the card that you've got and it's the Hermit card. So you really are doing the work right now, uh, potentially figuring out um, how it is um, that you can, you know, live your life moving forward. Um, and you're doing this in isolation and how appropriate, you know, we're forced to sometimes retreat into the her hermetic um, into hermetic times it's very healthy and if you if regardless of what sign you are but if for Leo because you are such an open sign and you are the Sun and that means that there's also that egoist right you know that 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 egoistic side that um, that, that might sound bad for, for some people, but I, I don't see it as a bad thing, you know. Um, Leo, you love yourselves. You do love yourselves. Um, but sometimes you don't love yourself enough to, like, dig deep into what, like, what has been hurting you. Um, but I'm, I'm, glad to, I'm glad to say that that seems to be changing because you've been left with no choice but to do that. So embrace it Leo next we've got Taurus and Taurus what I got for you shy of uh, two months ago is that you were writing this out you're writing this out and in fact some of you might be enjoying it too you might be enjoying it because you're like oh yes you know I get to just kick back and relax and enjoy you know the the small finer details in life some of you may also be uh, decorating reorganizing your space and you know moving things around trying to you know trying to get that feng shui going i've done that too i don't have taurus in my chart but you know i felt like well I, I might as well, like, I, I might as well, like, move things around a little bit, see how I feel, clear, clear things um, out from, uh, from my closet, things that I haven't touched uh, in, 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 in such a long time, and, you know, clear space, clear mind, right? Um, so you're writing this out, Taurus, you're probably writing it out in a very lavish way too. Excuse me, though, if that doesn't resonate with all Tor Taurians, but, um, some signs are, are going to be handling the status quo a lot better than others. And um, I feel as though, Taurus, you are one of those signs. 
the card that comes for you is, yeah, <laughs> this Ten of Pentacles here. So really, really enjoying your home at, at the minute, enjoying um, everything that you have access to. So Taurus, you know, you, you like to live the high life and um, if you have been successful in your life, then you've probably built a house of your dreams or at least, you know, your environment is the way that you want it to be and you've made the most, you've made the most of like staying indoors and appreciating what you have and this is a time to appreciate what we have because now more than ever a lot of people are losing what they have in Taurus. You may not be an exception to that rule but because you've been so, Taurus you are also cautious, right? You're usually cautious at how you gain your wealth. So that means that you're not going to frivolously spend every dollar that you've got in your pocket. If anything, quite the opposite. You want to make sure that you're saving for a good future, especially if you've got children on the way. And so, Taurus, you may be looking at your assets now and thinking, okay, how do I protect my assets um, but not to the point that it stresses you out because again, this is this is in my opinion about Enjoying what you have and simply being grateful for what you have and I think a lot of people are learning are learning lessons um, such as you know the sensibility that comes with saving Because a lot of people live month to month and while they may not have a choice because everyone's circumstances are so very different They may not have a choice. They may not be able to save at the end of the month These are dire times and I think now we're starting to realize both the value and also in value Is that even a word? Of money basically is what I'm trying to say so that it's not really money that we need in our, well, we need money, but health, you know, what, what would you do without your health? What would you do without your sanity? Basically teaching yourself to appreciate what you have and, you know, learn, learn lessons of how to recoup from any losses that you, that may have been incurred. And if you don't save usually, well, you know, you know now more than ever that you definitely do need to start saving. And um, if you are the type of person that has been saving pretty much your whole life, well, then you're probably in a better off situation than others around you. And so in the past, in past circumstances, when people would come and say and point fingers and be like, oh, God, you're so selfish, or oh, God, so stingy, like, why? Why won't you look, let loose a little bit and like treat yourself? For God's sake, that's not... First of all, Taurus does treat themselves. <laughs> you love to treat yourself, but you don't always, you know, like to speak about it. You're not necessarily going to go knocking on people's door and say, oh, uh, look, what I, look what I got for myself this weekend, or, or look what I plan on, on, on doing, or look where I plan on going for a holiday soon, and it's all fancy looking and all of that. No, you don't like to boast about it, not at all. You're a humble person. You're extremely hardworking as well, so you usually earn what you make, and you want to spend it adequately, right? So... If anything, you're now, like, who's laughing now, right? It's like, uh, I'm the one who's taken care of myself this whole time, and I've been saving, and you've been saving for the rainy day, and guess what? The rainy day came, and it's not even a rainy day. It's a rainy week. It's a rainy month. It's a, ra a rainy, like, three or four months, right? So, Taurus, that's what I get for you. Cancer, you're next. Cancer, as usual you're watching over us and um, there have been different kinds of shifts that we've also been experiencing. Ooh, I am experiencing a little bit of pain in my leg though I must be very honest with you whether it's the way I'm uh, sitting I'm not, I'm not too sure but it's been happening for a while now anyway not the point but um, Cancer, this Cancerian energy is very much about the divine feminine. It is this uh, um, female energy which this, th this world that we live in has 
been lacking in. We've been lacking in the nourishment that is the mother because we've had so much focus on the divine masculine energy, which is very much Capricornian energy that we are leaving. Pluto is exiting Capricorn. Did I get that right? Um, regardless, um, we are entering a Cancerian Phase, where now men, male and masculine energies as well, like men are starting to embrace the necessity and the benefits, the health benefits that come from embracing their emotions and from speaking about the way that they feel, something which our traditional fathers have been very reluctant to do because in history, if you are a man, and you are a man with great pride, to talk about your insecurities or to talk about your emotions or let your emotions get the best of you was seen as a, was seen as a sign of weakness and was reserved for the women, right? Like, women are sensitive and women feel all kinds of things and, and, and men are the driving force and, and men are the breadwinners and they have to be strong and powerful and all of that. And, and honestly, where has it gotten us, right? Where has it gotten us? It's brought so much devastation onto our, onto our masculine friends and fathers and brothers where it, <laughs> there's only so much you can fill within you, right? Before it comes out in one burst of, explo of an explosion of emotion that you can no, you don't even know what to do with this emotion. It's like, well, it's like I was never educated as to like how to deal with my emotion. I, I wasn't taught how to love myself the way that I deserve to be loved. And I'm not saying that you don't love yourself. It's just that it's not always very easy for you to admit when you need us, the rest of us, to extend our hand to you and say, come and let me support you for once. Let the woman drive things for once. That's going to anger a few people. I don't care. So Cancer, you're watching over us right now. Like you always watch over us. You're bringing out this motherly um, vibe, you know, which we which we so need, which this world desperately needs right now. And the card that comes out for you is the card of the Five of Pentacles, where at some point or another, Cancer, you felt like you were forsaken, right? You felt like you were the one that was cast out, and and now you're, you know, by reclaiming your power. I hope you realize, Cancer, that we want to be there for you as well. That you don't always have to be that motherly nature, that motherly force um, that he sprinkles love to everyone, sprinkles care to everyone. What about me? What about me? What about my right to feel that love and care and that nourishment? So you've been cast out and you may still feel as though there's a lot of a lot more work that needs to be done for you to truly feel okay with the situation. But do you know what? The five of pentacles also represents someone being there for you. Someone being there for you through thick and thin. And this person, whoever it may be, is there for you through thick and thin because they've seen how you've been there for them and others through thick and thin. And now it is your time. It is your turn to be the one that takes a breather. And we all need to remember to breathe. And, and, and realize it's okay. It's okay. It's okay to let go a little bit. It's okay. Ow, jeez, my thigh is really acting up today. It's okay to let go, you know, it's okay to be the one that receives that motherly nature, that, that attention and that nurturing that you so very much deserve. It doesn't mean that you yourself will stop being that beautiful force of nature 
um, for others. It just means that you, you also, you need to refill the energy. You've been depleted, Cancer, uh, of energy for such a long time. And now it's, your, it's really your turn to shine. But as they say, you know, it, it has to get worse before it gets better is what I want to say. It, it's going to get worse before it gets uh, better. And you may be right now experiencing, unfortunately, that the, the effect of it's getting worse. And I'm not sure if I'm ever going to get out of it, you know, but it will pass fives, like the five of pentacles and all fives are temporary cards. They bring a little bit of grief that might feel like a lot of grief in the moment. It might feel like it's very difficult to get out of. They usually are, like fives are quite tricky to get out of. And I again will remind everyone of the five of swords that we saw come out early and how it's very easy to get caught up in that, you know, this is, this is looting energy. We don't want this energy. We don't appreciate this energy, guys. We really don't. A uh, person that embraces the Five of Swords has an inflated sense that they can get away with what they're doing in that moment. And they may. They may get away with it for a while. But, uh, not, but, 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 but rest assured that that luck only goes so far. So this Five of Pentacles, though, that you are experiencing, Cancer, um, you know, difficult times, somber times, um, it's not all dark and there are people that care for you. There is definitely someone who wants to be there for you, that is there for you. Okay, conscious of the time that we have. Next, we've got Aquarius. An Aquarius, you were the first sign that I meditated on at the time and Several keywords came out. Refocusing, retrospection, reinventing, re-energizing, and preparing for what's to come. Because Aquarius, a lot like Scorpio, you may get flashes of insights that come from absolutely, well, well you don't really know where they come from. To you, it may feel like it comes from nowhere. Um, a lot of Aquarians are blessed with like clairvoyance and clairaudience and where you see and hear um, thoughts and images sometimes and while those those thoughts and images or whatever it may be or it can it can also be a feeling sometimes um, might not always make sense in the moment they usually tend to click into place especially if you have done the work and especially if you work through meditation rest assured that those messages will start to become a lot clearer now aquarius you are a forward thinking futuristic sign you are all about looking into the future and in fact aquarius oftentimes people could sometimes criticize you for being just a little bit too forward thinking you know where I remember, so I'm an Aquarius son, right? And I remember well over 15 years ago now, my obsession with the field of artificial intelligence and robotics, and I'm not going to get into all of that now, but um, coming from the background that I came from, uh, being a cognitive psychologist, um, a lot of people didn't really quite understand why I would choose to study psychology if at the end of the day I was going to turn around to all of my professors and say, but actually, um, you know, it's all about AI and it's all about the future and technology and uh, we need to get with the program. And everyone thought I was absolutely batshit crazy. They were just like, there is no room for this talk here. Uh, not everyone said that, you know, there are forward thinking people as well that were around me that were, were quite intrigued about my thought process. But essentially, you know, Aquarius, and we are dawning the age of Aquarius, right? 
So it is inherently in our nature to prepare for what's to come. And if we don't prepare ourselves for what's to come, we help others prepare for what's to come. A lot like Libra right now is giving us that mental support, right? Dropping hints here and there with their subtle... Um, subtle ways of, of, of reaching out and, and, and giving us um, a helping hand whilst they also do their own inner work. For us, it's a little bit difficult for Aquarians. It is a little bit difficult for us to, um, you know, to stop and, and, and think about, like, to think backwards, to retrospect, to, re to, to you know, anything involving relating back to our own histories and learning from our own histories, we now need to zone in and we need to follow through with what's coming through. You may be getting all kinds of haphazard, like energy, erratic energy, much like I was expressing to you guys earlier. It was difficult for me to, you know, simply meditate on one sign at a time so that I could, you know, deliver um, individual readings for you because I was, you know, one minute thinking of Aquarius, the next minute I'm thinking of Sagittarius, the other minute I'm thinking of Virgo and and it was just, it was, it was very, very overwhelming and, and, and I will be very sincere that I had, have been feeling that way for, for such a long time and I'm only just now starting to come back to my own center where the key is to take everything right now, Aquarius, that you may be experiencing and pick a thing and follow through. It's energies right now might not be on our side to, um, what's the word I'm looking for? To pursue multiple different projects at the same time. This is not to say that you can't take on all these projects. It's just to say that we need to plan a bit more effectively. So essentially tell yourself, hey, this week I'm, I'm going to focus on this. Next week I'll look at the second project. The week after I'll look at this other thing that I was interested in. And they don't have to be in bursts of weekly sprints. They can be, it can be a monthly thing where, where this month I'm going to focus on my astrology studies and next month I'll um, focus more on the tarot and the month after that I'll you know completely disregard all of that spiritual work don't disregard it but I am um, I'm more interested in science right now um, Aquarius can be very contrarian um, and Aquarius can receive a lot of grief in the sense that um, we often you know, we often have to endure questions like, how can you be a scientist and read the tarot? How can you be a scientist and believe in astrology? Don't get me started. Don't get me started. Point is, you don't have to be vocal about what you're doing. You don't have to be public about what you're doing. You can keep it to yourself. This is your time. And do you know what? Many things that Aquarians have forecasted in the past are happening now. Many things that Aquarians got told was complete pure rubbish in the past, you know, like, oh, you don't know what you're talking about, that's never going to happen, is happening. So Aquarius, you are preparing for what's to come. You're probably a lot more prepared than others. What is the card for you? It is the hanged man, my friends. It is the hanged man. This is a deeply private card. It is a deeply private card. And it says, you know, yeah. If you're unable to follow through with your multitude of projects all at the same time, even though you're usually very good, you know, between flipping back and forth, um, between several things, um, if you were struggling basically, you know, to to, to, to continue at that pace, then the advice that I just gave you a while ago is, is very timely. Pick and choose one thing and focus on that. That is how you will get forward. That is how you will see yourself come out of the rut that you may be experiencing. 
And it is through the hangman gives us a wonderful advice to basically wait, wait and be patient. It teaches us patience. It says that while your time may not be right now, because again, Aquarius, you are forward thinking, you are all about the future. And yes, we are dawning the age of Aquarius. <laughs> We've in fact been thinking oh, this entire time of, gosh, when is it going to be our turn? When is it going to be our turn? And people look at us and say, yeah, you're right. And, and you know what? We think that you could truly be an authority um, right now. You're on the verge. You're on the edge. You are so close. Just hang in there. Hang in there a little bit longer, Aquarius. You're going to get that breakthrough. Right. Next, we have got Capricorn. Ooh, my word. Uh, it's been an hour and a half, you guys. Okay, Capricorn. What I got for you shy of two months ago, as I was meditating on your sign, was rest. You need to rest. And a lot like how Aquarius before you got retrospection and re-energize you know to, to to the need to re-energize for you you're also you also got rest reflect retire and repair capricorn you need to freshen up you need to get rid of all things that are stagnant in you and you need to update 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 your old ways and let me just remind you of what i had said for cancer not too long ago and that was that it, you know for, for, for such a long time we were embodying this very divine masculine energy which is that of Capricorn and so Capricorn has been such a dominant force in, in, in all of our lives for such a long time and Capricorn Capricorn is, is, is an earth sign and it preaches material gain and wealth and Re, you know, material resources and all of your physical belongings and everything that you can see and touch and buy, money in your banks, the furniture that you have in your homes, the clothes that you put on yourselves, the places that you go to visit as well. Capricorn very much is earthly energy that we can see, feel and touch around us, right? We've been so used to that way of living that it is very much now antiquated and we have to look forward in, in, in a direction that um, preaches more empathy, emotionality, um, this side of us that we don't usually see and you know what that brings up like it opens a can of worms, it opens up a can of worms because it is the fear of the unknown. And we are very much now in that traject in, in that direction of like trying to propel ourselves into the future, not really knowing what will come next. Geez, like first this pa coronavirus pandemic and 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 and, 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 and revolutions in other countries and black lives matter, what next? You know, what next? We need to refresh and we need to reinvent ourselves in more acceptable ways, Capricorn. You cannot continue to work the way that you usually do. You will burn out. So I hope that you are taking this time, Capricorn, to love yourself more, to rest and refresh, and please reclaim your power. And reclaiming your power goes to everyone here. Your card is justice and it is justice in the reverse. And I will say something and this may bother you. Justice in the reverse, it may come to mean that because your time is coming to an end, and I do not mean that in any fatalistic way, do not misunderstand me. It just means that for such a long time, um, things were working out in your favor. And, okay, not all Capricorns will resonate with that fully because depending on where you're, if you are a Capricorn sun or a Capricorn moon, Capricorn rising, or you have Capricorn elsewhere in your chart, I've got lots of Capricorn in my chart. You will 
you will feel stagnation in certain parts of your life right now depending on where cap you know that capricorn energy falls in your chart and um, you may start to see obstacles arise if you haven't done the work in in those houses you know in in um look to see where capricorn falls in your natal chart um in order to see whether or not this will be affecting your finances your uh your home life your uh relationship sector um you may you may start to feel as though it's not fair it's just simply not fair um that um our string of luck is is coming to a close now it's coming to an end and it is now time to let someone else basically or, or let other people um with a different kind of energy basically um take the limelight okay so justice being re reversed right now does not mean that you know it's not your time is not going to come back around and that you can't flip this upright it just means that it is a lot I, I also feel that it has a lot to do with this temperance that is reversed which was in the general reading right and so it has a lot to do with that in the sense that we can't always have things go smoothly. There will all there will be times, right, when things don't work out the way that we want them to. So, um, unless you do the work to figure out, you know, where which aspects are um, are like you know causing you uh, strife or pain or suffering in in certain um, areas of your life, unless you do the work to overcome that by reflecting on your past and and you know allowing yourself to rest and retire and to basically repair any damage that has been done you may find that you are stuck in the state of justice in the reverse for a lot longer so we really need to loosen up a little bit we really need to let go of um, our old ways Capricorn let's move on now to Pisces we are down to the last two signs guys so Pisces Pisces what did I get for you I got to pontificate to ponder to deep dive to disappear almost Pisces um yeah so you're not a stranger to the dreamland. You're not a stranger to being sometimes trapped in your head. You're not a stranger to sometimes dealing with very uncomfortable emotions. Pisces, in, in many ways, a lot like, you know, much like your fellow uh, water sign brethren, um, Scorpio and, um, excuse me, <laughs> Scorpio and Cancer, you're not a stranger to having a wealth of emotions and you're usually quite uh, good at handling these emotions. Um, but Pisces, this doesn't mean that you're, you're always going to have it easy. So unless you do your own deep dive, unless you do your own investigation of your soul, your soul investigation, um, then you know, some of you may be feeling a little bit anxious as to where this will take you. Like, what is your legacy? What is your legacy? That is coming to me very strongly here. That you may be thinking, especially for um, older Pisceans right now, is um, what have I done in my life um, that I can reflect on now and say, hey, I'm proud of that. And hey, um, I know my children are going to be proud of this too when they look back. So what is the legacy that you want to leave behind, Pisces? That's what I want you to think about now, okay? The card that comes out for you is the King of Swords in the reverse. And that's because no doubt, you know, you are, you are going to be juggling a lot of thoughts, um, a lot of different thoughts in your head, and some, some of which may come into conflict. So usually when you've got the King of Swords in the upright, the King of Swords, you know, there is more decisive thought there. Um, it is sharp thought. Um, it's very quick thinking thought. Not reckless like this Knight of Swords. Definitely not reckless. In fact, once upon a time, the King of Swords was the Knight of Swords, right? Um, uh, and 
after charging into battle one too many times and not only injuring himself but also injuring people around him, he has matured into a place where he now knows you know, when to have his reservations and when to speak out. And um, as we're dealing with swords here, this is very much up in, our, up in our head. It is extremely mental. So it is really around our own reservations and um, what we wish to deal with on our own uh, versus what we wish to disclose to others, which may not be very easy. A lot of Pisces are extremely private people. They don't necessarily want others to know what they're going through. Um, you are... You may be feeling that way. The King of Swords is, is reversed right now. So you may be very deep in thought. And um, it might not be very clear as of yet, you know, what uh, what good will come of this. But trust me, there is always good to be had when you're investigating your own soul and being true to yourself. So please, please pontificate away. There's no better time than now to pontificate, ponder and deep dive. Disappear if you need to. That's completely acceptable. Just do you, Pisces. Okay? Great. So, guys, we are at the very last sign and that is a Virgo. This is definitely the, probably the longest video I have ever recorded. <laughs> I'm getting a little bit tired, but Virgo. Virgo. Woo! At the very beginning of this pandemic, you were still very much head in work, head in the game, so much so that you probably didn't even, you were too busy to notice what was happening because you were so consumed with your work. I had the strongest and most overwhelming feeling when I was initially meditating on your sign a couple of months ago that... Um, Unlike other people who were, you know, thinking, well, we can't work right now. It doesn't feel very right for us to, to work right now. We can't focus. You were all about like, hell no. I mean, I've got my Excel sheets. I've, I've got my, um, you know, um, budgets to balance, um, teams to manage, all these things. And usually you're a very hard worker as well. A lot of earth signs are all hard workers. You were so busy. You were, you were that busy that you didn't even, you weren't even entirely sure if you were ever going to get affected by um, this pandemic. In fact, like while people were starting to slow down or probably being sent home uh, from their works, you were being asked to come in. Um, a lot of you may have been frontline workers. Thank you so much, by the way, for all the frontline workers, um, key workers who have been literally putting their lives on the line so that, you know, um, so that we can get the treatments that we need in hospital. Thank you so much. And and, and there are all kinds of um, key workers out there as well. You know, people in our supermarkets, uh, people um, making sure that our, our streets are clean. I mean, endless thanks and love to all of you. Um, no doubtedly, people of all signs are key workers. But Virgo, you know, it's like when people were being sent home and asked to take some time off, you were honestly being called to the front line in your respective fields and industries. Um, because we can't all stop at the same time. We, we just can't. Like, it's look at the economy and look at how much we are um, suffering right now in the economy. No doubtedly, we need people to keep things going. So it's like, you know, to keep the cogs turning, to keep the machine, keep machines well oiled, in other words, Virgo. And um, you have very much been doing that. However, uh, you know, please be kind to yourself, please take some time off because you're going to burn out. Um, I have spoken to a couple of Virgos recently and I, I it's it's not coming from me. It's coming from them. They, you know, a lot of you have been feeling like you, will, you are about to burn out. A lot of you also may have been feeling like your work's been uh, going unnoticed, that you haven't been appreciated enough, be it in the workplace or be it in the home. Um, and, um, it's, it's just simply unacceptable, really. Like we all deserve recognition, right? We all deserve recognition. And, 
likewise though we also deserve to have some time off from this from our manic times right now so Virgo I mean really thank you so much anyway for all the work that you've been doing on yourselves uh, but please rest please rest and your card is strength and oh my goodness it is strength reversed and this is uncanny I because I gave a read a personal reading to a Virgo literally just the other day and strength reverse came came out and so I, I just feel the need to reiterate it please your energy will get depleted much like Capricorn if you do not be careful so please use the time now to take some time off if you can um, have a have a small mini holiday if you can um, just make sure you soak up the sun as well vitamin D is necessary it's necessary now more than ever we need it to keep our spirits up we need it to have to, to keep our immune systems strong as well strength is in strength in the reverse doesn't necessarily mean that there is no strength there at all it is just simply less of um, um, just not as powerful as it would have been, as you can imagine, if strength was upright right now. So you've still got a lot in you, but you need to reserve that for yourself. Stop giving away your power to others, right? So guys, oh my gosh, it feels so good to do this again. Thank you so much again for being here with me. I really look forward to um, reading your comments. Um, please feel free to give me a shout out. Um, please like this video. That would be great. Please subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. And um, yeah, much love to you. Thank you so much. And um, we will talk soon again. I hope so. Okay. Much love. Bye-bye.